And welcome into Real Deal Sports Talk with me, KP. It is September 9th, 2017. College football's in full swing. NFL football's in full swing. The political scene is in full swing. And I'm just hoping that today you guys are able to, to kick back and relax. Enjoy the latter of those. And uh, enjoy today's games in college football. Enjoy tomorrow's games in pro football. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your loved ones. Try and make a positive change. Reach out and do what you can when you can help. Uh, We're trying to make it a better place. That's real talk. I'm KP. Let's get into it. Last weekend, last Saturday, we had the fantasy draft. This week, I'm going to break down everybody's draft, go through the picks I liked, the picks I didn't like. At the end, I'll talk about my team and tear it apart a little bit. Not too happy with how my draft turned out, but that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll catch up on uh, the games coming up in the NFL this weekend. We'll talk a little bit about the Kansas City-New England game. Uh, we'll catch up on some scores in college football as well. So a lot to get to today. Let's jump right in. We'll start with the sm- Smash Mouth football. Um, their picks, they took wide receiver Mike Evans, wide receiver Des Bryant, uh, wide receiver Brandon Cooks, running back Carlos Hyde, tight end Calvin- Travis Kelsey, running back Bilal Powell, Quarterback Dak Prescott, New England Patriots defense, Steven Hauschka, kicker. Running back Tevin Coleman, running back Adrian Peterson, running back Samaji Pirine, receiver Marvin Jones, and receiver Rashad Matthews. With their last pick, they took quarterback Phillip Rivers in the 15th round, which that's amazing. Phillip Rivers Rivers was around in the 15th round, so that's a steal pick for them for Smash Mouth football as far as I'm concerned. Richard Matthews, he might give you some games here and there. Uh, we'll see how consistent he can be in Tennessee and whether or not he's going to be one of Mariota's favorite targets. Marvin Jones in the 13th round, that's a good pick. A lot of people had him going higher than that in some of the draft numbers that I've seen. Um, Again, can he stay hot throughout the season, or is he going to do like last year where he was good for a period and then disappeared? Uh, This team, Smash Mouth Football, they they backed that up with the running backs that they chose, P. Ryan, Peterson. um, Those are Smash Mouth kind of guys. Tevin Coleman, he's a backup kind of guy. But we'll get touches there in Atlanta. Hauschka's pretty solid in Seattle. Expect their offense to put up some points and move the ball. So he should have his opportunities in the kicking game. The Patriots defense, we all saw what happened with them on Thursday night in Kansas in New England against Kansas City. Excuse me. Um, so hopefully they're able to put something better than that on the field the rest of the season. Dak Prescott in the seventh round, a lot of people think he's going to have a breakout year this year and take that rookie of the year status from last year and just a, a, make the Cowboys go over the top this year and get to the, the Super Bowl. Bilal Powell, not really sure why that was the pick in the sixth round, but okay, go ahead. The Jets got to do something on offense. Travis Kelsey didn't really do much the other night. I uh, a lot of trick formations out of him. We'll see how Kansas City ends up ends up using him throughout the year. That was most likely just a game plan for New England. Carlos Hyde. Um, not sure I would have taken him as early as round four either. However, you know San Francisco. I don't even believe he's the starting running back in San Francisco right now. So that one kind of puzzles me. Brandon Cooks, I like. He needs to get his timing down with Tom Brady. It clearly wasn't quite there yet last night um, on some of the deep stuff it was. Des Bryant, prove it to me. You got the talent. You got the physical ability, but prove it to me. Do something for a round two pick there for Smash Mouth Football. And Mike Evans, I like that pick. I personally would not have gone with a wide receiver in round one. Overall, Deep draft for Smash Mouth Football, both receiver and running back. We'll have to see if maybe they make some trades throughout the season. Up next, Wildcats. Uh, they start their draft off with Drew Brees in the first round. They nab Christian McCaffrey early on in the second round. Uh, that was definitely a player I was looking at, but not quite that early in the second round. They go then rounds three and four with the Broncos receivers, Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. 
Round five, they pick up the Broncos defense. Clearly a Broncos fan here. Round six, Delaney Walker tight end in Tennessee. I like that pick. He's a player. Mark Ingram in round seven. Brandon McManus, round eight. Pick up Jameis Winston in round nine. Paul Perkins, the Giants running back in round 10. That could be a steal of a pick for them, depending on how the Giants' is, Giants' is offensive line produces this year. Cameron Bright was a breakout player last year at tight end. Expect him to do as well, if not better, this year. The ever-popular Randall Cobb, will he give it to you or will he not? That's week to week with him. Latavius Murray, he's going to be behind Dalvin Cook there in Minnesota, but he, expect him to get his chances down around the goal line for sure as the pounder there. Brashad Perryman, the wide receiver out of Baltimore, he's got to get on the field. Nobody really knows what he can do right now. Uh, he hasn't played much so far in his career. And then the Jacksonville Jaguars defense to round it out in the 15th round. So going back over the Wildcats draft, um, it's pretty solid, actually. Some of the running backs, you got starting running backs pretty much across the board and or guys that are going to uh, get significant carries in short yardage or, and or goal line situations. You have talent at the quarterback position. You have rotational guys, so they should stay healthy. You have two guys at receiver that are going back into a, a system that suits receivers a little more there in Denver. Drew Brees is a stud. He's going to put up numbers. And Christian McCaffrey, he's the ultimate unknown, but I believe he's going to be a fantasy stud and really be the guy for that Carolina Panthers team. So overall, very good draft from me. I think, for the Wildcats. Moving on to last year's league champion, they got me in the championship game, the Dirt Cannon. They start off real solid with wide receivers Antonio Brown and Jordy Nelson. Uh, Move on and grab running backs Todd Gurley and Kareem Hunt and C.J. Anderson. I mean, that one, two, three punch, pick who you're going to have. C.J. is going to be the guy most likely out of this lineup, but when you you see the right week, you're going to plug him in. Andrew Luck, uh, Tyler Eifert at tight end. He's a solid, solid tight end. Great kicker in Justin Tucker. Defense, Houston Texans. They get Eddie Lacy, LeGarrett Blunt, who's going to be a touchdown guy for Philadelphia. Corey Davis, the rookie wide receiver. Kenny Britt, uh, he's looking like he could be solid for Cleveland as much as you want to put with that. Jonathan Stewart. Probably could have picked somebody else up there with the way Christian McCaffrey. I'm expecting Christian McCaffrey to step up and play this season. And then Tyrod Taylor, who week to week you might want to see who he's playing against because he could put up some numbers as far as touchdowns um, as well. So, again, looking at the Dirt Cannon's draft, this is a very solid draft for the Dirt Cannon. Um, They're looking to repeat for sure. They have good depth. They have starters. They have, again, the short yardage guys for them are impressive. Uh, Touchdown makers all over that roster. So look for the Dirt Cannon to be a solid contender for the title again this season. Next, Nurdle Sandwich. They start off with A.J. Green and Rob Gronkowski. Pick up Lamar Miller, Larry Fitzgerald, Dalvin Cook, Jarvis Landry, Ty Montgomery, Kirk Cousins, Antonio Gates, Deshaun Jackson, Eric Decker, and Want Want. That's probably my least favorite pick for them. Giovanni Bernard, who rotational guy there in Cincinnati, but again, right situation, he's going to put up some points. Carson Palmer in the 13th round, Chris Boswell, the kicker, and then they finish out with the Atlanta Falcons defense, which... Let's see if they take a step forward and play a little better this season. Top half of their draft, really top two-thirds of the draft for Nurdle Sandwich. Uh, Very impressive with the players they were able to pick up. Stars for their teams, key guys for their teams, rookies that should make plays, guys that get a lot of catch opportunities. Um, Very impressed with Nurdle Sandwich's draft. They should compete as well this year, in my opinion. Moving on to Burger Boys, they pick up my one of my top two running backs in this year's fantasy draft in Le'Veon Bell. They go Jay Ajaye second, Ezekiel Elliott third, so very deep at running back already on this team. DeAndre Hopkins, Allen Robinson, he's going to have trouble there in Jacksonville with that quarterback situation, so I don't know why you get him in the fifth round. Um, then they go Greg Olson. Russell Wilson, the Seahawks defense, 
Dan Bailey, Stefan Diggs, a week-to-week guy. Martavius Bryant, expect him to have big numbers in the red zone. Brandon Marshall, another red zone guy. Josh Brown, deep threat for Arizona. Martellus Bennett, who's playing with Aaron Rodgers, and then they round out their draft in the 15th round with Andy Dalton. Great pickup there late with their tight end and quarterback combo with their final two picks. You got red zone threats. You got speedsters who get a lot of catches. You got quarterbacks that are pretty solid, good hands guys, and your first three picks are starting running backs that are going to tote the rock and get you touchdowns and yards. So Burger Boys, very solid draft. Um, Expect them week to week to be one of the top point getters with some of the guys they got, especially if Zeke is able to play throughout the entire year. All right, Tom Brady Zaddy. You have Julio Jones in the first round, Jordan Howard in the second. Then you went with Marshawn Lynch, Isaiah Crowell, Sammy Watkins, who's changing teams with L.A., so we don't really know what's going on there. Jimmy Graham, who had a better season last year in Seattle. Expect him to do well this season. Cam Newton, Stephen Goskowski, the Cardinals defense, Jamison Crowder, Danny Woodhead, Matt Forte, Jeremy Macklin, Jack Doyle, and Jordan Matthews in the 15th round. Um, Jordan Matthews there in Buffalo. He's hurt currently, so we'll have to see how he comes back from that sternum fracture. Jack Doyle in Indianapolis. Don't expect much from him if you play him in the first week. Uh, Don't have faith until Andrew Luck comes back for that quarterback situation. Jeremy Macklin, same thing there in Baltimore. Is the timing going to be there with Joe Flacco? Matt Forte is going to get his touches. Danny Woodhead, he's a here-and-there type of guy, not really big fantasy numbers. Uh, Jamison Crowder, you expect him to step up this season for Washington with some of the departures they've had. Arizona, we'll see how that team rounds out with the loss of Calais Campbell. Steven Guskowski is solid. Cam Newton, ultimate weapon now with Christian McCaffrey. Um, this is... Uh, Pretty sum in Jordan Howard, Julio Jones. Expect them to be around the league leaders or at least in the top five. I don't expect Marshawn Lynch personally to make it through more than half the season, but that's just me. I know people are calling me a hater. But um, overall, decent draft for Tom Brady Zaddy. I mean, you got some good picks. You got some guys where it's like, okay, you could have probably got somebody else. Not really fantasy producing number guys uh, and didn't really take any risks. But uh, overall, not too bad. All right, on point. Start off with last year's touchdown machine, Melvin Gordon. We'll see if he can reproduce that again this season. Uh, I am skeptical of that myself. Doug Baldwin, solid guy. Not real big fantasy numbers, but solid. Really good, good receiver there. Alshon Jeffrey, I have no faith in Alshon Jeffrey. I think he's overhyped. So let's see if he can prove it to me this year. Tom Brady, solid, solid pick in the fourth round. Didn't have a very good opening game there against Kansas City. You could see the timing wasn't quite there with some of the new weapons. Frank Gore, we'll see what he can do. He's getting older. They didn't really get better on the offensive line. Devontae Adams, you never know what you're going to get from him week to week. Zach Ertz, Ben Roethlisberger, he's going to put up big numbers this year with that Pittsburgh offense for sure. You get him in the eighth round. That's an amazing pick. Giants defense, Mason Crosby, the kicker. Pierre Gonçon going to be the number one option there in San Francisco. I expect him and Brian Hoyer to have a good start to the season. Darren Sproles. You never know what you're going to get out of him. Um, he is getting older, but he he finds his way through. Uh, Willie Sneed could be a big target there with Drew Brees in New Orleans. Jason Witten, the solid veteran. And then you round out with Jeremy Hill in the 15th round in that running back group for Cincinnati. Um, you know, this is an average draft. You got some good quarterbacks. You got some other guys you don't really know. They don't really put up a lot of fantasy numbers. Melvin Gordon, we're expecting stuff from him. Uh, They might end up having to trade a quarterback, Roethlisberger or Brady, to try and get somebody to get them some solid fantasy points week to week. Then we move on to C-130A. They have David Johnson in the first round. That would have been my pick as well with the number one pick in the first round. Then they go DeMarco Murray. 
T.Y. Hilton, Amari Cooper, Terrell Pryor, Jordan Reed, Marcus Mariota, the Chiefs defense, Matt Bryant, Mike Gillisley, Dante Moncrief, Theo Riddick, Derrick Henry, and Corey Coleman. And on that list, the player that really stands out to me that doesn't really fit into what this how this team was built was Theo Riddick. Um, rotational guy, third down player, mostly going to be a, a, a effective in the passing game. Derrick Henry and DeMarco Murray on the same team. Uh, that doesn't really make sense. You might want to look to trade one of those players away. T.Y. Hilton's going to be a solid target. Amari Cooper, I like Terrell Pryor. Cousins is going to probably try and zone in on him quite a bit throughout the season. Jordan Reed, if he stays healthy. Expect Marcus Mariota um, to have a good season. Some people think he's going to. I've heard out there that he might be this year's Matt Bryant. Kansas City's defense will be hurt, I think, greatly by the loss of Eric Berry. Mike Gillisley, he's going to be a touchdown machine, I think, for New England, so that's a good pickup. Um, and Corey Coleman, we'll see what he can do. He, he spent last year hurt, and they got Derek Carr in the 15th round, so that's probably one of the better players on this team fantasy-wise. Uh, expect him to put up some pretty big numbers, and David Johnson, so... You know, this team, they could make some splashes. They have some guys who can score. It just depends on how the week-to-week are going to go. Like a Derrick Henry, if you keep him and DeMarco Murray, which one are you going to play? Do you pick the right one that week? Corey Coleman, is he going to be the burner or possession type guy? Dante Moncrief and T.Y. Hilton. I mean, it's kind of weird how this team doubled up on some of the guys from the same team. But I don't have room to talk with some of my fantasy picks, which we'll get to here shortly. All right, Brady Gaga, they start off with Odell Beckham. Then they go Michael Thomas, Leonard Fournette, Joe Mixon, Michael Crabtree, Matt Ryan, Kyle Rudolph, the Vikings defense, Cairo Santos, Kelvin Benjamin, Thomas Rawls, Rob Kelly, Adam Thielen, Mike Wallace, and Hunter Henry in the 15th round. I like that Hunter Henry pick quite a bit. I kind of forgot about him in this draft, and by the time I remembered, he got snatched up. Mike Wallace, I have no faith in him. He's a one-trick pony, overrated in my opinion. Adam Thielen, he's going to have some weeks where he gets a lot of grabs, probably doesn't end up with a ton of yards or a ton of touchdowns. Thomas Rawls, Can he stay healthy? Is he going to put up numbers? Calvin Benjamin, he's going to be a solid target. If he stays healthy, he's going to put up another 10, 12 touchdown type season. Cairo Santos, the Chiefs, if they keep putting up points like that, Cairo Santos is going to put up a lot of points. Kyle Rudolph has the skill and the ability, but often finds himself hurt. Matt Ryan, a stud from last year. Crabtree puts up a lot of possessions. He gets a lot of catches, but it'd be nice to see him turn that into yards and touchdowns this year. You go rookie running backs with Fournette and Mixon. Um, That's putting a lot into those rookies. And then Michael Thomas is going to be a top target for Drew Brees. And Odell Beckham, if healthy, will be a top target, of course, for Eli Manning. So good team for Brady Gaga. Um Most of your points right now, to me, look like they're coming from your passing game. We'll see how some of those rookies uh, turn out for you. So, I mean, we're looking at solid drafts. Really the dirt cannon right now out of everybody that I just mentioned, and probably the Wildcats, um, have two of the better drafted teams out there. So now here we go. We'll get to my team. We'll critique me, and then we'll move on to some of the other things going on around town all right so here we go i start off i go running back Lashawn mccoy Devonte freeman then i grab me aaron Rodgers. okay then i go golden tate i think he's going to get a lot of grabs this year might be around 100 over a thousand yards i expect out of him i expect amir abdullah to be healthy i think he's going to be a, a nice addition to the lions offense this year uh, when healthy, I expect him to be around a thousand yards, around ten touchdowns. I grab Matthew Stafford in the sixth round because hey, week to week, I might like the matchup better. Matthew Stafford puts up fantasy points. I got Tariq Hill. He's going to be clearly a weapon for Kansas City. However, I'm a fool and I did not play him this week. I expected New England's defense to try and key on him and take him out of the game, um, and. and 
I think they got caught off guard when the stud Kareem Hunt came in and just dismantled them. Then I got Eric Ebron at tight end in the eighth round. He got better last year. I expect him to get around 80 grabs this year, maybe seven, eight touchdowns, somewhere in that range. Keenan Allen, I grab him in the ninth round. Um, again, he's a stud when healthy. Philip Rivers and him have a connection. He's had some bad injuries over the last few years, so I'm going to play him when I see a matchup that I like. Uh, then I go rookie tight end Evan Ingram. Again, I'll play him once I see how him and Eli are kind of working out. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play him in versus certain opponents because he's a spread tight end. He's a matchup nightmare against uh, linebackers and safeties. He's too big for corners. Doug Martin, when he comes back from suspension, I'll be able to plug him in um, at running back, especially on a bye week situation for one of my top two guys. Uh, Matt Prater, the kicker, my favorite kicker in the league. Tyrell Williams, uh, I think he's going to be a fantasy sleeper some weeks for the Chargers. Uh, Expect him to get a lot of yards and possibly even five or six, seven touchdowns uh, there from Phillip Rivers. Then I grab the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, Cooper Cup, the wide receiver rookie for uh, the L.A. Rams in the 15th round because I expect him to have one of those types of seasons where maybe at the end of the season I need some points. I expect him to have seven, eight grabs a game. Uh, Possession type guy, not necessarily a bunch of yards all the time, but some big plays here and there, and also be a red zone threat. Overall, didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. I'm happy with it. I got two stud fantasy quarterbacks, same division, uh, different bye weeks. I got two stud, possibly three stud running backs. I got the ultimate playmaker, playmaker in Tyree Kill. Kind of some depth, some maybe guys. And I'm willing to get rid of the defense if the Steelers can't stop anybody like they haven't been able to in years past. Overall, I'm excited for this fantasy season. Thank you for the other nine opponents who signed up for this year. Uh, It's going to be some fun. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing how the two divisions, the rookies and the vets, break out. And then after that, how the playoff situation goes. And um, it'll be fun. (laughs) All right. Good job, everybody. That is the recap of this year's Fantasy Draft. All right, so my picks for this weekend. I have to say before we start, I did pick New England to beat Kansas City, so I am 0-1 on the weekend right now. Um, I did not expect that from New England's defense. I did not expect the lack of timing that Brady had with the receivers. And I did not expect Josh McDaniel's big boy pants to get too big for him and for him to change up the way he called plays so much throughout the game that there was just no fluidity to it. Uh, They had, in the first five minutes, as everybody's talked about, their foot on the pedal. They looked like they were going to go ahead and put Kansas City away. A couple breaks didn't go their way, and it's like he deviated and tried to outsmart himself And ultimately, I think that combined with the lack of familiarity in the passing game with the receivers and the loss of Edelman and Gronkowski looking slow and not ready to play at all. And the, the running game started off well, but then disappeared. And Kansas City came out hungry. They came out to fight. They got punched in the mouth early. They fought back. Both teams lost some key guys, some for the year, some maybe just for several weeks. Uh, It was a great way to start off the season, but again, I did choose New England in that game. Moving on, Buffalo and the Jets. I will take Buffalo. These are the early games. I'll take Buffalo over the Jets early, Atlanta over Chicago. I will take Cincinnati over Baltimore, Pittsburgh over Cleveland. I'm going to ride with my Detroit Lions all year, of course. I'll pick them to beat Arizona. I expect Houston to destroy Jacksonville in this game. I'll take Tennessee over Oakland. I'm going to take Philly over Washington. I'll take the Rams over Indianapolis because Andrew Luck's not playing. 
then moving into, and that's the first afternoon game, moving into the rest of the afternoon games tomorrow, I'll take, I'm taking Green Bay over Seattle. I'm going to take Carolina over San Francisco. I'm going to take the Giants to make it three straight over Dallas. I will take, ooh, Minnesota, New Orleans. This is a tough one for me. Um, I like some of the stuff that Minnesota is doing on the offensive side of the ball. I like a lot of their young pieces on the defensive side of the ball. New Orleans seems like this might be a down year for them. Uh, This is an evenly matched game in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and take New Orleans to go into Minnesota and squeak by late. Get it late. I'm going to take Denver over the Chargers on Monday night, um, the second Monday night game there after the New Orleans-Minnesota game. Those are my picks. Le'Veon Bell is back in practice. Aaron Donald is back but will not play this weekend. Um... I'm just glad football's back. I don't like the business side of the game. I trouble with it. I love talking about the game. I loved playing the game when I played. Uh, I just love football. Let's check in on some of these scores before we get out of here. This is Real Deal Sports Talk. Your host, KP. We've talked about last week's fantasy draft. We just went through my picks for the NFL uh, weekend and now let's check in on some of the scores here for the college football games going on currently. You have Alabama beating Fresno State currently twenty eight to three. Penn State's up on Pittsburgh twenty one to three. Virginia Tech is up on Delaware seventeen to nothing. TCU is winning currently with over Arkansas fourteen to seven. Tennessee's up on Indiana State twenty eight to nothing. Michigan, tough game early for Michigan, but they pulled away in the second half as they beat Cincinnati 36 to 14. It was close there for a while as it sat at 17 to 14 uh, when I was watching the game for quite a while. Wisconsin beats Florida Atlantic 31 to 14. Louisville gets past North Carolina in a shootout 47 35. Kansas State beats Charlotte 55 to 7. There's more games to come. It's a football weekend. Again, enjoy your family. Enjoy your fun. Help people when you can. Reach out to a neighbor. Enjoy sports. Be real. And until next time, you know how we do. Just be real.